The sun is the source of life on earth, the center of our solar system and the most important star in the sky. But how much do we really know about this fiery ball of plasma that sustains us? And what secrets does it hold for the future of humanity and our planet? Watch this next report to know more about how questions and questions that India's space agency ISRO is trying to answer with its ambitious Aditya L1 mission. Sun, the source of all life on planet Earth. The giant ball of fire is the major source of energy for Earth's oceans, atmosphere and land. Every 1.5 millionths of a second, the sun releases more energy than all humans consume in an entire year. Without the sun's heat and light, life on Earth would not exist. The sun can also get furious, sending out blasts of plasma, solar flares which can wreak havoc. It can cause power grid, cell phone and GPS disruptions. Knowing more about the effects of the solar wind is not only important to those of us who live on Earth, but also for future astronauts. After its feet firmly on the lunar surface, India is set for a leap towards the Sun. The Aditya L1 mission is India's first dedicated solar mission, which aims to study the Sun from a unique vantage point, the Lagrange Point L1, which is about 1.5 million kilometers from Earth. This is a point where the gravitational forces of the Sun and the Earth balance each other, creating a stable orbit for a spacecraft. But Indians have been curious about our parent star for a long time. Aryabhata, India's first satellite. Aryabhata launched in 1975 by a Soviet rocket, took the first peep at the sun. It carried a payload to measure X-ray emissions from the sun. Long before that, the Rig Veda, which is one of the oldest and most sacred texts of Hinduism, dating back to around 1500 BC, mentioned the sun as the source of light, heat and energy. It also described solar eclipses, solstices and equinoxes. Again, the Surya Siddhanta, a Sanskrit treatise in astronomy dated to the 4th and 5th centuries, estimated the diameter of the Sun as 1.39 million kilometers, which is very close to the modern value of 1.392 million kilometers. And Aditya, which means Sun in Sanskrit, is set to examine the Sun from a closer proximity, will take the scientific quest to a greater height. Clearly, ancient Indians were high on scientific research on the Sun and its relation to other celestial bodies. They used observation, logic and mathematics and experimentation to develop their theories and methods. Bureau Report, we on World is One. We are now less than 40 minutes to the launch of Aditya L1 and for more on this, our senior correspondent Siddharth MP has sent us this report from Sri Hari Quarter. It's just barely 10 days after India soft landed the Chandrayaan-3 craft near the Luna South Pole and now the Indian Space Agency ISRO is back with yet another significant milestone in its spacefaring journey. So we're just coming to you ahead of the launch of India's Aditya L1 spacecraft. This is India's maiden mission to study the sun. Aditya L1, of course, the mission right now is uh, in its countdown phase. There is a countdown that's underway until 11.50 a.m. on Saturday. That's when the PSLV XL vehicle, the largest variant of the PSLV rocket, will blast off from the first launch pad at Satish Dhawan Space Center's first launch pad. Let's remember that the Aditya craft will be 
pushed 1.5 million kilometers away from the earth the craft will be taking a journey that will last uh, almost 125 days and this is also a very significant journey because very important scientific gains are expected from this for indian researchers and indian academia the sun is the sole power source for the entire solar system for the earth this is the nearest star and this is a dynamic star that uh, aditya l1 will be studying the sun and also some of the most important and mysterious phenomena that affect the earth and also you know leave earthlings in wonder happen because of the sun we are talking about the northern and southern lights the aurora borealis and aurora australis so these are also very scenic phenomena these happen because of you know high energy particles that are discharged from the sun they reach the earth atmosphere and this is what causes the northern and southern lights in addition to that highly charged particles from the sun also pose a risk they could damage the spacecraft that are in earth orbit so these are the phenomena that are significantly you know caused by the sun aditya l1 will be trying to study all of this aditya l1 will be trying to study the sun in great detail from its vantage point that is 1.5 million kilometers away from the surface of the earth with video journalist chandrashekar from shehari kota siddharth mp we are world is one so this is uh, live in shehari kota we are just waiting for the launch of this rocket, the PSLV, which is carrying the Aditya L1 to blast off to space and uh, see the sun up close. So we are counting less than 40 minutes now until the launch time, which is expected at 11.45 a.m. IST, that is Indian Standard Time, where the PSLV XL rocket, which is carrying the Aditya L1 will blast off to space and then it will begin the experiment of uh, observing the, the sun, the sun rays and all that for a hundred days. Remember, this is another milestone for India. Indian scientists have so far observed the sun through telescopes on the ground and relied on data from solar missions launched by the United States, Europe, the United Kingdom and Japan. And now they are going closer to the sun to see how the sun operates and how it works for the rest of us and for the rest of humanity. Siddharth MP is joining us live from Sri Harikota. Siddharth MP, uh, is it all systems go? We are counting less than 40 minutes it's now 32 minutes uh, until launch is it all systems go on your end absolutely eric we're given to understand from the isro teams here that all systems are go um, so it's at 11501150 that this vehicle is expected to blast off from the second launch pad at satish dhawan space center in sri harikota we're in the final minutes of the countdown so so far all looks good and uh, you know as far as the pslv rocket is concerned so this is a rocket that's delivered 95% successes in 58 missions to date so as far as the reliability of the vehicle is concerned there is no concern at all because this is a vehicle that has actually proven to ISRO and to the world, including to several international customers of ISRO, mm -hmm. that a rocket can be so reliable. Because 95% success rate is an enviable number. Not too many rockets in India stable and not too many in the global stable of launch vehicles have this kind of a track record. This, in fact, is also marking 30 years of PSLV. It was in 1993 in September, back then, that the PSLV took to the skies for the first time. And here we are 30 years later, the PSLV is taking to the skies. This is the 59th flight of the PSLV rocket. In fact, the uh, people who built the PSLV rocket once told Vion, in fact, these are some of the engineers and scientists who in fact built the engines that go into the PSLV rocket. So mm -hmm. this we're talking about uh, Padma Bhushan, Nambi Narayanan, a veteran Indian scientist and a liquid propulsion system expert. So he told us that the PSLV rocket is such an obstinate rocket that even if you want it to fail, it won't fail. So that's the level of confidence that ISRO and the Indian scientists possess in this vehicle. Mm -hmm. And that's the testimony as to why it's been flying for 30 years. Notably, PSLV has also launched India's Chandrayaan-1, Mangalyaan-Mars mission and now Sun mission. And PSLV
ISLV has launched more than 350 foreign satellites, you know, uh, as customers approached ISRO, and 350 of them have been launched, and all these missions have been successful. This is the kind of expectation from PSLV. So just like uh, Moon and Mars have been done earlier successfully by PSLV, Aditya also will be, uh, you know, executed extremely successfully by PSLV. That's the expectation here, Eric. Siddharth. Aditya L1 will travel for nearly 100 days to cover the 1.5 million kilometer distance to L1 or the Lagrange 1. This is a shorter voyage than Manglayan, which took 298 days, I'm reading here, to reach the Martian orbit in 2014. Could you explain the voyage to us? Yes, Eric, absolutely. So, like you pointed out, the Mangalyan voyage took uh, several months, at least eight months, purely because of the fact that the Earth mass distance and to enter Martian orbit, the parameters are completely different. And when you're launching to uh, another planet, so it has to be calculated in such a way that the craft travels in the vicinity of Mars and Martian orbit. And, you know, it goes on a path and eight months later, it goes in the vicinity of Mars. It's not a straight line path. It's in circles that you travel. So when both of these orbits intersect, that's when the craft ent enters Martian orbit. And of course, the Earth mass distance is significantly higher. And as far as the L1 point is concerned, the Earth sun distance is 150 million, 150 million kilometers. But L1 point is only 1% of that distance or 1.5 million kilometers, 15 lakh kilometers to put it simply. So that's how far it is. So to give you more perspective, Chandrayaan 3, which traveled around 3.84 lakh kilometers to the moon, took about uh, 30 to 40 days, right? Mm -hmm. So here you're traveling uh, 1.5 million, which is roughly four times that. So therefore you're taking almost four times as much time, which is almost 120 days, which is in fact three times as much time. So 120 days is the expected travel time to L1 point. And this is also because you're using a lighter rocket. It's like, you know, a you know, more muscular person and a bigger built person can lift heavier weights and throw a short put ball further. But right. somebody who's not as well built cannot throw it as far. That's the same reason that small rockets and big rockets travel differently. So India is using a small rocket, the PSLV. So just like that, the PSLV is not a big, fat, muscular rocket. So the PSLV will take its own sweet time. And thereafter, the spacecraft will take its own sweet time, 120 days to reach L1 point. So that's the logic as to why these missions take so much time. If you had powerful rockets and if you had a different kind of mission objective, then you would use powerful rockets to get there faster. Mm -hmm. But this time around, there are no uh, similar requirements. So ISRO has chosen that the PSLV is the best bet to accomplish this mission. Eric. Siddharth, finally, we are talking about the Aditya L1 spending five years orbiting the sun. Why is that? Uh, why has ISRO, ISRO decided to take five years for the Aditya L1 to orbit the sun and to observe the sun? Probably you can uh, tell our viewers the importance of that, briefly. So Eric, exactly. So like you pointed out, five years is the planned mission life. Why five years? Because we are going to a vantage point, L1, Lagrangian point one, 1.5 million kilometers from the Earth. That's a clear vantage point around which this craft will orbit. And from there, there is no, you know, drag or pull by Earth or the Sun. So it's in a state of equilibrium. It's a safe orbit to be in. It's a very energy efficient place to be in. So you don't have to spend much fuel to be there. Plus from there, you can view the Sun continuously. In fact, there's a payload known as VELC on board this craft. VELC will be imaging the sun's corona every single minute for the next five years or more than that. So what you require to study the sun is you require unprecedented amount of detail and you require detailed uh, detail for a sustained period of time. It's only then that you can understand the variations, the dynamism, the changes in the sun, solar weather, solar storms, eruptions from the sun, particles and plasma that are being erupted. All this you need to understand and only sustained efforts at studying this can do this, which is why we are taking five years because in five years, a, a clear pattern will emerge. Scientists will be able to learn this pattern and then they can draw their inferences from this. Science and space science particularly is not something that will give you immediate returns. So there are several missions that give you results only decades later. But that's what these scientists are all about. They're extremely determined and they're ready to wait it out because to understand our cosmos, to understand our solar system, we have spent like, uh, you know, at least a few hundred years. But now, even now, we don't have a clear understanding. That's the kind of mystery we're looking at. And yeah. the sun is at least set to be four and a half or five billion years old to understand a body like this. Five years, in fact, is less time. So that's the kind of sophistication we're dealing with over here, Eric. 
live from Sri Harikosha. That is our senior correspondent, Siddharth MP. Siddharth MP, thank you. I will see you shortly because it's now under 26 minutes before the launch of Aditya L1 to the sun. And I've been talking to our correspondent, Siddharth MP, who's given us the importance of this launch and the importance of Aditya L1. And we'll have a conversation with him just before the launch begins. You're watching We On Wild as One. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.